So welcome back everyone. Now that we understand how to use blockchains for currencies, let's look at applications of, of blockchains that are way beyond uh, cryptocurrencies. And in some sense, this is a lot, a lot of the excitement around the space in that we can use blockchains for many, many other things. So first, let me remind you that uh, we talked about various cryptocurrencies out there, but in fact, there are many, many cryptocurrencies that already exist. So we talked about Bitcoin and Ethereum, but in fact, I there are many others and I listed um, sort of the largest uh, out there today. Um, so it's quite interesting. For example, EOS is a potential competitor to Ethereum. Uh, Stellar is a different way of managing the, block the blockchain. Litecoin is a competitor to Bitcoin with uh, cheaper transaction fee fees. Tether is trying to produce a stable, uh, stable coin so that it doesn't uh, fluctuate as much. Um, Cardano has its own um, a consensus mechanism. And Monero is a very private uh, cryptocurrency, as we'll talk about in the next segment. So you can see these crypto, many cryptocurrencies are out there. They, they differ from one another um, in different ways. But these are still limited to currency applications. So I want to talk about um, applications beyond currencies. Okay, so we already said that, in fact, um, cryptocurrencies themselves are quite interesting in that you hold the funds, no one can take the funds away from you. And in fact, one of the successful applications of Bitcoin is, in fact, as a replacement for gold. Yeah, this is kind of one of the killer apps um, for Bitcoin. If you think about it, it's much easier to store than gold. All you're storing is a secret signing key, a 32-byte secret signing key. It's much easier to transport the funds. All I, if I want to give someone my uh, currency, all I have to do is give them um, my secret key or just issue a transaction on the blockchain. And it's much easier to kind of uh, exchange uh, these currencies with other others than it is with gold. So already a replacement for gold is kind of an important application for, for Bitcoin. And I want you to remember that maybe in a developing country, this is maybe not such a big deal, but if you're in a developing economy, where perhaps you don't trust the local financial system, um, you know, these cryptocurrencies are kind of a way for you to develop a savings account, um, to uh, store the funds, transfer the funds, and so on, in a way that seems potentially, um, you know, more, more appealing than what's available to you. Uh, there are problems with the existing schemes. So one problem, of course, is the issue of scaling, which we'll talk about later on. The Bitcoin network, for example, is relatively slow. It handles about three transactions per second which is much, much, much slower than, for example, the Visa or the PayPal system, as we'll see later on. The other problem is um, there's high volatility in that the, 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 the price of these cryptocurrencies fluctuates uh, quite rapidly. But fortunately, there are solutions to both of these. Um, so for, exam for example, there's something called a stable coin that tries to address the issue of high volatility. If you're interested in how stable coins work, uh, you can just basically Google this concept. There's a lot of information on how stable coins operate. It's quite interesting um, and worth learning about. And then for scaling, there are in fact many, many, many scaling proposals. Um, I'll talk about those actually in the next, uh, next segments. Yeah, so there are good solutions uh, to both of these problems and we can expect that um, uh, you know, at least the replacement for gold application will continue to be uh, quite successful, at least for Bitcoin. 